Hi, my name is Lon Blauvelt. I'm a developer at the University of California's Genomics Institute up in Santa Cruz. Today I'm going to give a brief overview of a command line tool to run scientific workflows called TOIL. And specifically, the TOIL CWL runner, some of its architecture, and how to use it. I'll only give a very brief summary of the common workflow language CWL, as I assume most people watching this are familiar with it. CWL is a formalized shorthand for describing complex computational work, and also, it's insanely useful to be able to provide a CWL script to any supported runner and have it coordinate potentially millions of tasks to return coherent, consistent results. So Toil is one of these runners. It's an open source Apache 2 licensed production level CWL runner. Toil aims to be powerful in both how you're able to configure your workflow runs and its ability to scale. And you might be curious as to why Toil was originally developed. The core of Toil was originally created by Benedict Payton at UCSC to coordinate whole genome alignments, which can have rather large graphs, and benefited from Toil's ability to dynamically generate tasks. On the Toil CWL runner side of things, which is largely a layer over the CWL tool code base, and which wraps and runs CWL jobs as Toil jobs, this was originally designed and developed by Peter Amstutz of Curie. Since this start, Toil has, over the years, added cloud support for AWS and Google, which Toil specifies as provisioners. Toil also supports multiple compute backends, referred to as batch systems, and they describe the main environment that Toil runs in. This is important because each batch system has a different way of delivering work, although they all basically boil down to a leader, which delegates tasks to workers ensures that task dependencies are enforced, and finally rounds up all of the defined task outputs. Batch systems in TOIL can generally be broken down into three basic groups. High Performance Computing Systems, or HPCs, like Grid Engine, HD Condor, LSF, Slurm, Torque, and Parasol. And the Single Machine Batch System, which is the default for testing out a small workflow or anything locally on, say, your laptop, and our two dynamically scaling batch systems, which we use in the cloud, Apache Mesos, which is supported by both AWS and Google on the Toil end, and Kubernetes, which is currently supported on the Toil end in AWS. So to go into each of these just a bit further, HPC systems are often institutional, shared clusters with their own job scheduling managers. In order to run on them, Toil submits tasks into the cluster's queue, monitors the cluster's job scheduler for completed or failed tasks, coordinates the input and output dependencies required to submit new tasks, and does this until all tasks are complete and the workflow's final outputs are produced. Single machine batch system, as its name suggests, only uses the resources of the machine it's run on. This system uses a leader thread and a number of worker threads based on the number of CPUs available or user configuration. And finally, let's take a look at one of our auto scaling batch systems. Toil's default architecture for running on AWS and Google is Mesos. And I want to add that although Mesos is currently the best supported of the two auto-scaling batch system options, a lot of our recent efforts have been around making Kubernetes work robustly, with the eventual goal that Kubernetes will become the new default over Mesos. Our auto-scaling batch systems are a little more complex, and this diagram helps to give a simple overview of how the Mesos batch system is set up. With the Mesos batch system, the user launches an instance which becomes the leader node for the workflow. This leader node and all subsequent worker nodes spun up by the leader node have a minimal Linux OS, which is currently Flatcar and was formerly Core OS, on top of which we deploy a pre-built Mesos Docker image containing the version of Toil and some other pre-built dependencies, which we call the Toil Appliance. When a Toil workflow is run from the leader, it spins up 
and shuts down, where appropriate, worker instances to complete tasks based on parameters specified by the user, including minimum and maximum values for the number of instances to use, their type, and even whether or not to use discounted instance types on the spot market. Sorry about that. All auto-scaling batch systems can leverage spot pricing to reduce the cost of a workflow and take advantage of discounted instance types when available. Now we'll go to the Kubernetes auto-scaling batch system, which is relatively new and is now supported on AWS. It also makes use of the Toil appliance to provide a consistent environment in which to run tasks and is intended to eventually replace Mesos and become the default auto-scaling batch system for all supported clouds. This has the advantage of using Kubernetes built-in auto-scaler so that we have less to maintain and have a more generally accepted product that's considered robust and fit for deployment systems in production. So besides telling Toil which batch system to run in, Toil also needs to know a centralized location to keep all shared files, logs, and cached files. Toil calls this the job store. The job store can be any directory folder that's universally accessible, or it can alternatively be a cloud bucket on either Google or AWS, provided you have the appropriate cloud credentials to access it. Batch systems and job stores can be mixed and matched. You run a local workflow via single machine with an AWS job store and vice versa, as just one example. The core command to run a CWO workflow with no frills or extra options is straightforward and will run the tools specified in the local default batch system with a local default job store, returning a summary of outputs produced by the workflow, if any. Our next slide is an example with more detailed usage by setting various options within Toil prior to the run. All these options are covered in our documentation in the link below, as well as instructions to run in the cloud and via our various batch systems. Here we see how simple it is to change where the run's files are stored by setting the CWL runner's job store to different cloud buckets. This can be further modified with a clean command to clean up the buckets after a run or save them for printing post-run statistics. Should something go wrong, these job stores contain the necessary state to pick up where they left off in the event that a workflow needs to be restarted. And that's it for my overview of Toil. Uh, it was very simple and I hope you enjoyed my talk. I'll now take questions.